Hello boys and girls, this is Mrs. Ciotti. Um, I am going to introduce the lesson to you today. It is on facial proportion. So proportion means that everything, all the parts of something are in the right place. So this has to do with our face because it's facial support proportion. So that means that the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth are placed in the correct place on your head and that your head is the right shape, your eyes are the right shape, your nose is the right shape, and your mouth is the right shape. Um, and your eyebrows and your eyebrows are the right shape. So everything's the right shape and in the correct place on the face for facial proportion. Um, I am going to start out by showing some common mistakes that people make before I teach them facial proportion. Um, you should have already done the do now, which is um, you just drawing a face the way you think a face should look right now. I'm gonna show how most of those faces look before they are taught about facial proportion. And then we will get into what facial proportion and what correct facial proportion looks like. Um, today is gonna be a practice day. So today you did the pre-assessment, which was where you are right now before the lesson. And then um, right when I am doing the lesson on how a face should actually look, you are going to be trying to do the face on, your, on the back of your do now so that you can practice for the first time how to do this very difficult thing. So if you don't get this right away, you are totally normal. It is a very difficult thing to understand. We are brought up to believe um, that our eyes are way up here. I call them alien eyes. Um, so we're brought up for years and years and years drawing people like that. And then when you finally learn how to draw a face with correct proportions, it's kind of jarring. It's kind of like you're taken out of your element and you kind of disbelieve like that's right. No, that's not right because I've been doing it this way and this way looks right. But I'll show you. Um, I'll show you with the Mona Lisa. I will show you with a professional artist who does faces and I will, I will show you on a piece of paper how to do it yourself. So we are starting on this journey. It's going to be awesome. Here we go. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you the common mistakes that are made when someone is doing facial proportion. So this is the pre-assessment part. I'm gonna put PA. So this is the part before you've learned how to do it. Um, and I'm gonna put my name, I'm gonna put T Ciotti and 2X because there is no 2X. All right, so first kids do a head that is kind of a circle like that. That's not what a head looks like, but that's what kids do most of the time. Kids do eyes that are way up here and they're usually circles. Not really in real life. Eyes are not way up here. They're not usually circles. Kids do, most kids, I'm not saying all kids, maybe you have proportions down, but most kids do a nose that looks like an L or a backwards L. That's not what a nose really looks like. That looks kind of like a beak, actually. And then kids do a mouth that's kind of one line. Sometimes it's curved, sometimes it's not curved, but one line. You actually have two lips, so we're going to learn how to do that. Usually kids don't do eyebrows, but, but if you do do eyebrows, it's usually like that, which kind of is where eyebrows are according to the eyes, but the eyes are in the wrong place, so everything else is in the wrong place. So let's flip our paper over and let's talk about um, the shape of your head. So. I have a handy dandy little tool here. This is an egg. Your head is not a circle. It is the shape of an egg. So this egg is a little bigger on top. That's to hold your big brain. And then it's a little smaller on the bottom where your chin comes down and tapers down. It's not a point or anything. Your chin isn't pointy. It just comes down a little bit more narrow than up here where your brain has to be held. So. I'm going to do a little line down my egg and 
I'm gonna do my egg on this piece of paper. So you can do this with me. You're doing the top part like you're doing a half circle. And I want you to take up the whole paper like this so we have a lot of room. Okay, so then this is the half circle. It's a, it ends a little bit above the middle of the paper. So this would probably be the middle of the paper. I'm doing the half circle a little bit above because I want more um, space down here so it can taper to the chin area. Okay, that's my chin. And now I just, and I, I wanted it to be like halfway down. So I'm gonna go do this, do this line. It's halfway down my face. So I want the middle of the chin to be in that half. Oh, can you see? No, let me make this smaller. There we go. Okay, so I want the middle of the chin to be in that halfway zone. So it's halfway up here. I go all the way down, halfway down there. Now I just have to, with a gentle curving line, like my, my uh, pen just normally goes in that curve anyway. If I want to connect those two lines, you're not going to do a straight line. You're because nobody's cheek is just straight down. You're going to go ahead and do a curving line that just follows how your hand kind of curves that way. And so that I can use my hand curvature the same way. I'm going to flip my paper over and I'm going to do the same curving line. Okay, so I'm going to go from here all the way to there, a curving line, slightly curving. It's not straight. If it was straight, it would be like this. It's slightly curving. And this is even too much of an angle. I would probably go more like that. Okay, so that is the gentle curving line. I have my halfway mark down here. And now I'm gonna do something totally unscientific. Unsci I'm gonna, you can use a ruler to do this, but you don't have to. You're gonna go from here to here. You're gonna try to move at the same speed and see where your two fingers meet. My two fingers meet right there. I'm gonna make a line right there. And I'm gonna draw that line all the way across. Just a dotted line. You're using pencil. I'm using Sharpie so that you can see it a little better because it's a dotted line so you you can't see it very well anyway. And with your pencil, you're doing it very light so that you can erase the guidelines later on. So what lies on that line? Most people, and let me do it on my egg, most people would say that what lies on that guiding line is your nose, because your nose is in the middle of your face. But actually, that is not true. What is in your middle of your face surprisingly enough, are your eyes. So I know you don't believe me. I know you don't believe me right now. Let's take a look at the Mona Lisa. So her face, her whole head is shaped like an egg. You notice how it tapers down on the chin a little bit down here. We're gonna measure from the tippy top of her head, which would be right here, to her chin, which would be right here. So I blew up her face a little bit uh, let me take this off. I blew her face up on my computer. Now, I'm going to draw a line where the tippy top of her head is. So I want to be parallel to the top of my paper, and I'm just going to draw that line. Do you see how that's the top of her head right there? So I want to draw a line going right there, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing with her chin. So her chin is down here. That's pretty much where her neck starts. Oh, I have to make my ruler a little str more straight across. And I'm going to go right there. Okay, so from the top of her head to her chin. Now I'm going to take my ruler. You don't need a ruler for this. I am just showing you this. So I'm going to put my ruler in. I'm going to measure in centimeters. So from here is zero centimeters. And down here is like... 20 and a half centimeters, so almost 21, between the 20 and the 21. So if I put a line right where the middle of that is, let's say 10 and a quarter, because 10 plus 10 is 20. So I'm gonna put it right about here. And then I'm gonna line that up 
to be straight across the best I can. And that is where her eyes are, okay? Halfway down your head is where your eyes are. And most people would put eyes way up here, way up here. But they're actually even below that halfway line for Leonardo da Vinci and this most famous um, portrait, which is of the Mona Lisa. So you can tell I am not lying to you. Your eyes are halfway down your head. I promise you. Look at at your neighbor right now. Their eyes are halfway down their head. You can't go from where your hairline is right here. You have to go from where the top of your head is, which is above where your hair starts. So the top of your head to your chin, your eyes are halfway down your head. I promise you this is true. I am not lying to you. I would not steer you in the wrong direction for this. So this is where my eyes are. On the Mona Lisa, her eyes were a little bit below. We're Just to make it more simple, we're going to do our eyes right on that line. So now we have to worry about how big the eyes are and worry about how what shape they are because we have to have them in the right size and in the right shape. So I'm going to go a little bit away from the middle, maybe like one finger away, and that's where my eye is going to start. Now who can tell me what shape are your eyes? You can look at a neighbor to figure it out. They are not circles. That is a hint. They are not circles. So your eyes are actually shaped like lemons or footballs. They're shaped like an oval that's been pinched at the ends. So I'm going to go ahead and do the top of my oval over here with the pinched ends or the football shape. And I'm going to do the bottom of my oval under the line, the guideline. Okay? And they're about that big. So you should be able to fit like one of your eyes in the other part, one of your eyes in between here, one of your eyes right here, and one of the eyes in the other part. It's a weird proportion thing, but if you just want to do it about this size, that's about what it is. Now I did one finger from here. I want to do one finger from here. Just as a reminder, you should be doing this right now on your paper in your pencil. So I want to do about the same size. So I'm going to look at this to see where I should end. I should probably end right about here, I think. So I'm going to do a little dot right there, a little dot right here, so I know where to start and end. And I want that football shape. Now, is it going to be exactly the same? No, nobody's perfect. You just have to have that little pinch at the end of each part. It cannot be an oval. So some people do like ovals like that. Nope, it has to be pinched at the end. It has to come to a point, okay? All right, so now the inside of the eye is the pupil, which is the black part, but the color part is called the iris. And it's a circle, but you never, almost never, only if somebody's really super surprised, you almost never see the whole iris. It's always covered up by some of the eyelid. So if you want to draw the whole iris that goes outside a little bit like that and then go back and erase that part and erase that part, that's fine. But usually the iris is, is covered up on the top just a tiny bit and covered up on the bottom just a tiny bit. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to do that circle as best I can. And the middle part you can just fill in is the pupil that's always black like that. Okay, are these exactly the same? No, they're not symmetrical completely, but I did my best. It was the best I could do. Now, here's another scientific thing. We have to do the nose next. I am going to turn my paper sideways. I'm going to put my fingers right here and my fingers right here and I'm going to guide them both at the same rate 
until they meet. And then where they meet, I am going to put a little guideline. Okay, so then I'll turn it back. So this is my little guide nut line. What is that? You might say that's the mouth. Nope, that's actually the nose. So if I, let's take my Mona Lisa again. So if I went with my Mona Lisa and I went right there, that is where the nose is. Halfway between the eyes and the chin is where the nose is. Halfway between the eyes and the chin is where the nose is. Now this is how you draw a nose. It is no longer gonna be a beak like that or an L or a backwards L or anything like that. We're gonna draw a realistic nose and people are intimidated by that. People think, oh, I can't draw a realistic nose. That's so hard. It's actually very, very simple if you just break it down into the steps. The first step is draw a plate, a tiny little plate that the middle is right there, a tiny little plate. On the edge of the plate, you're going to draw what is going to be the nostril. Here's one nostril, and it's attached to the plate. Here's another nostril, okay? You don't want a flat plate because that doesn't hold any food. Your food will just, like, go right off. You want a plate that's slightly curved, okay? And then you're doing the nostrils, the nostril holes, I should say, right there. Then we're going to do the sides of the nostril. So we're going to skip a little bit of space. I'm going to skip about a centimeter. I'm not sure what you're going to skip, but right above the guideline. So the guideline, if I carried it out here, is over here. So I'm, I'm doing above the guideline is my nostril. That's kind of like, um, what is it called, parentheses? Yeah, parentheses. So I'm skipping about a centimeter and I'm doing the same thing over here. And that's a nose right there. If I erase this guideline right now, that's a nose. That's a realistic looking nose. If you want to do the bridge of the nose, because some people like doing the bridge of the nose, you can. It would come down like this. You could do it on one side. You could do it on both sides. I don't like even doing the bridge of the nose though, because that right there is the nose. Done. Okay? So now I need to do, let me just go over that again, because some people get a little lost. So you're First to doing the plate that's right below the guideline, okay? It starts on the guideline, it dips a little bit because you want it to be able to carry food, and then it comes back up to the guideline, okay? Then you're attaching the holes of the nostrils right to the edges of the plate. Then you're skipping a little bit of space, and you're doing the sides of the nostrils that are above the guideline. Then if you want to do the bridge of the nose, you can do the bridge of the nose, but you don't have to. Okay, so the next step is to find out where the mouth is. So I'm going to take my two fingers. I'm going to go on the chin and on the nose guideline and go doot, 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 doot. And that is where I'm going to put a guideline. That is where my mouth should be with correct proportions that is where my mouth should be. So everybody should have this guideline right here. So now, how do we draw the mouth with two lips? Well, we have this guideline right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the upper lip. Now, everybody has a little indentation right in the middle, right above their upper lip. You have a little indentation. Everybody can feel it right now that little indentation that's right here above your lip, and that makes a little dip in your lip. Whether you're a girl, whether you're a boy, everybody has it. So I do that little dip right here. It's sort of like doing the plate right here. You're, you're following that whole line, that line, that line. Okay, so now I'm coming over here, and that's gonna be the upper lip. Um, for the upper lip, I'm just gonna do a tiny little divot right there because that's how lips go and that 
is the upper lip. That's above the guideline. I kind of covered up my guideline at this point. Now, from the corners, you're going to do the lower lip. So I'm going to come down here, come across, and come back up. That is the lower lip. So from now on, there is no more doing a mouth like this. There's no more doing a mouth like this. There's no more doing a mouth like this. No more lines for a mouth. You have to have two lips, an upper lip and a lower lip. Okay. Now you're going to go a little bit above the eye for the eyebrow. So the eyebrow just follows the same curve of the eye and goes across like that. A lot of times, if you want to get technical, um, people line up the edge of the nostril with the edge of the eye, and that's where the eyebrow should end. So my eyebrow should have come over a little bit more, like there. So if you line that up, it lines up perfectly. The edge of the nostril, the edge of the eye, and the eyebrow. But totally up to you. The edge of the eye also lines up with the eyebrow if you just go straight up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and do this over here. Is it going to be exactly the same? No, because I'm not perfect. Nobody is. Just a gentle curve. And let me see how I did on that. Oh, I did pretty good. That one was good. Okay, so those are the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the eyebrows. At this point, you are pretty done. So if you want to um, make it look like you, you can go ahead and do that. If you want to add like eyelashes, everybody has eyelashes. It's not just a girl thing. Everybody has eyelashes. Don't think it's just for girls. Um, if you want to add like eyebrow hair or whatever. If you want to add hair, like real hair, what you're going to do is you're going to come down a couple of inches from the top. Now, what this should be is if this was divide this line from the eye line to the top of the head was divided in three, which is hard to do because this is divided in two. So if you want to go like this and then just go up a little bit, this is where your hairline should be. Okay, this is where your hair starts. So this is her hairline right here. So if you went here. You went halfway and then you went up a little bit. That's where her hairline is. So if I divided it in three, if this was, so if this was one part, one part, one part, and they're all equal, then this would be the correct place for my hair to start. So I don't know if you have bangs, if you don't have bangs, um, if your hair goes straight up, if your hair, my, I do have bangs. Sometimes I wear them as bangs, sometimes I don't, but I'm going to put the bangs right here. Mine are kind of poofy and curved like this. So, and then I usually have um, braids in, so I'm going to do like my hair is being put away. And your hair might come up a little bit above your head or to the side of your head, that's fine. So if my hair was coming over in braids, then I would be doing this and then it would come down. Um, your hair is also on the side of your head. So a lot of times when people do hair, they only do hair right here, and they, don't, they ignore the side of their head. You are not bald on the side of your head. You do have hair, you do have hair. That reminds me, people ask about ears. Ears are complicated. You don't have to do ears. It's, it's a little beyond a um, second grade thing to do ears. So if I wanted to do my braids, I would do my braids like kind of like this, coming all the way down. Um, and I would probably start my braids over here, coming all the way down like that. So that's how I would do my face. But after you have the eyes, nose, mouth, and eyebrows, you can do your hair however you want. The most important part of this is to get the eyes right because the eyes are halfway. And if you don't get the eyes right, everything else is measured from the eyes. So you would get everything else wrong. So getting the eyes right is the most important thing. Okay. 
I would have a lot more hair over here. Or it would just be in a braid that comes out over here. All right, I think I am done. If you finish yours in black and white, oh, I have to put a neck. I need to put a neck. So a neck um, is definitely beyond the part where your eye stops, the corner of your eye. So I would go like this, I would go like this, and that is my neck, okay? So everybody's neck, some people's neck comes down right here from their ears, and they have a thick, like, muscular neck, but most people's, um, it's beyond, it has to be beyond your eyes, where your eyes are. So if I went straight down from here, that's where my neck would be. Um, okay, so if you get done early with your drawing, you can go ahead and use your art materials to color it in. If you don't get done, then um, you're just gonna hand in whatever you have. So your name should be on the pre-assessment side, the side before I taught you to actually do correct facial proportions. That's what we're learning facial proportions so you're going to hand this in so i could see where you went from here to here next week we will doing an actual we will be doing an actual project um where you're going to be drawing your face and then we will be painting and doing crazy stuff to it so this is just a practice day so if you don't get this right away don't be too hard on yourself. This is really hard to get because you've been drawing in a different way for so, so, so very long. Okay, good luck. I hope you have fun.